What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm starting a new video series called Cab Rehab, where I take an old arcade one-up machine and see if we can't fix it up for less money than it would cost you to buy a brand new. And my latest project, well, it's right behind me. Okay, so what we have here is a Street Fighter II arcade one-up cabinet. This is one of the uh, first generation cabinets that arcade one-up ever produced. You can see there's some issues with the stickers and decals peeling, especially on the marquee. And then, of course, the control panel is just in really bad shape. Now, these first-generation cabs did not come with the Lexan control panel protector, which is a shame because the paint job on this is so poor, it will just smear and come off on your hand, like they painted it with butter. And there are a few other flaws, including this tear on the side art, and uh, a loose screw in the back. Hopefully, that's not a sign of a bigger problem. Despite the cosmetic issues, the cab functions properly and the LCD is nice and bright, so I think we have a good foundation for a build here. Alright, so let's start with what should be an easy fix, this loose screw in the back. I just want to make sure that the threads aren't stripped or there's any other issues. So we'll just remove it, and sure enough it seems to be okay, so with a little Loctite, it gets reinserted and tightened down snug. Alright, now it's time to break out the glass cleaner and give this thing a good wipe down. Alright, so the first upgrade is going to be a riser. Now, to me, this is really a necessity, especially if you're six foot one like I am. Now, don't pay more than $45 for this, which is what I paid for it at Walmart. Even if it's not in stock in your area, just give it some time. It'll come back. It's not worth paying $80, $90, or even $100 like I've seen on eBay. Trust me. Now, the Arcade 1-Up logo on the front of this is fine, but I want to do something a little bit different, something to tie it into the rest of the cabinet. Now, because so many of the big companies online are experiencing delays, and including Arcade 1-Up not having anything in stock, I rolled the dice a little bit and went with the company I found on eBay. Now, I was pretty impressed with the product. The film is nice and thick, I like the backing, and I even like the protective clear coating on the front. Now, even though this is a new riser, I cleaned the surface with the glass cleaner just to make sure that it was prepared for the new decal. This is going to be a really important step for you if your riser is a little bit older. Okay, let's go ahead and get the decal into position, and I like to cut some of that backing paper off so that I'm only dealing with a small portion of the adhesive back exposed in case I have to reposition the decal. This is going to be really, really important later because the whole thing can get sideways really quickly on you. So it's better just to work with a small piece and then work your way across the riser. That initial lineup, obviously really, really crucial. Make sure you are lined up top to bottom, pressing as you go. Remember the idea is to make sure that there's no air bubbles. You never want to wrinkle the film. Now I will tell you that I didn't get this perfectly right the first time, so I did have to remove parts of the decal, move it around a little bit, and then reapply. And I found that the vinyl was, you know, tough enough to take it. Now I'm not going to say it's the thickest film I've ever encountered, and it's not going to be as thick as the uh, control panel overlay that we're going to work with later, but it was plenty thick enough to be manipulated and stretched to where you didn't have to worry about tearing the film. And as I slowly made my way across the riser, I peeled back a little bit of that uh, protective paper, about three or four inches at a time, so they only had to deal with that much uh, sticky surface. I'm using my right hand to make sure that I'm not overhanging the top of the riser. There was a little bit of extra material on the ends, i say maybe a uh, maybe quarter inch, uh, but that did fold over nice and um, Looks good, so it wasn't a big issue. And as you pull the clear protective layer away from the decal, continue to press that onto the riser. You don't want that to separate from the riser itself. So just work a little bit at a time, similar to the way you applied it. And always remember to pull flat and away instead of straight up so you don't lift off the riser itself. Okay, I did have to use the X-Acto knife and trim off a little bit on the very bottom. Alright, next up let's disassemble this control panel, get it off the cab, so that we can apply that brand new overlay. Hmm. 
Man, one of the joys of buying something secondhand. Someone used the wrong screw in the control panel, so I have three of the correct screws, and I got this fourth one that we're just gonna discard for now. Okay, this is where silly me thought I could just wipe this down with some glass cleaner and put a new sticker on and call it good. The great thing about this decal is it will go over the stock buttons. You don't really have to remove anything other than the actual handles on the joysticks, but this, this surface is just weird. I mean, the paint continues to come off on my hands. And I just didn't feel that, you know, it was going to be a good surface to put a sticker on. I thought for sure that it would peel over time. And, you know, it's going to get a lot of abuse anyway, being an arcade machine, being the control panel, being the place where you put your freaking hands. And I just didn't think it would last. So I decided to bite the bullet, take off the back cover, and pop out all of the buttons. Maybe leave the joysticks in place. Um, but as I looked at the wires, I thought, what am I going to use to get this paint off? And then it hit me. So I applied some acetone to a paper towel, and I was shocked to see how easy this stuff comes off. It's like you're wiping mud off of a glassy surface. Now with the acetone a confirmed success, I started taking out all the buttons. Now remember, pay attention to these buttons as they're connected to the actual encoder on the board. And if you look at the encoder, you'll notice that your buttons are actually labeled A through F. A being weak punch, and F being fierce kick. Also take note of the round bump on the side of your buttons. It's going to correspond to a rounded notch in the actual control panel. Alright, to get access to the remaining buttons, we're going to have to remove the three screws that hold down the encoder and then the three screws that hold down the volume and power switches. Now with all the buttons out of the way, it is time to finish cleaning off the control panel board itself. Now, I'm really using no effort, no pressure whatsoever, but you are going to have to reapply the acetone frequently because it evaporates. Also, you might want to wear some plastic gloves because this does dry your skin out, so, you know, don't be like me. And after what seemed like hours, but really it was just minutes, the board will come completely clean. And what you end up with is a perfect surface to apply that overlay. All right, so we're going to use similar techniques uh, that we used applying the decal for the riser. Uh, this material is a lot thicker. I think it's uh, designed to handle a little more abuse. So you're going to be able to reposition this several times. Uh, but still, you want to be careful, take your time. You don't want to ruin the adhesive on the back. But start at the first corner, start at that side, get it, up, get it lined up nice and neat, and then begin to roll back that paper and push it down. And this actually went on a lot easier than the, uh, the riser decal did. I don't know if it's because it's a little bit thicker or maybe I had a little more practice. Now I got these from DB Graphics. They're a good company out of Michigan. I use their eBay store and uh, they had great communication. They've got a lot of options and they're reasonably priced. Now the riser decal was $25 and this was only 23 bucks. And for the cost of a new control panel or even getting a replacement from Arcade 1UP, and the fact that they never have anything in stock, this was like a really a no-brainer. Now the only alignment issues I had were the holes for the speaker. They didn't quite line up. It wasn't terribly distracting, but uh, you could tell close up. Also the holes for the actual bolts that hold the control panel down were a little small, so I had to cut a few reliefs with my X-Acto knife just to make sure that the decal would lay down and not peel up. Okay, now it's time to reassemble the control panel, so I started with the bezels for the power and volume switches. Another important thing to remember, make sure the proper color button goes back in the proper location because all the wires are cut to length. If you try to mix up the colors, you may come up short.
And before I put the back cover on, I cut some thin pieces of electrical tape to kind of keep all the wires bundled up and, you know, keep them nice, neat, and organized. Make sure you have a good connection on the ribbon connector. Set the control panel in place. We'll put the joystick dust covers on. Now the last thing I want to do is put these silly balls back on top of the joysticks. So I thought it'd be better to go with uh, a more appropriate choice. The bed top. Okay, that's going to do it for this episode, but make sure you check back next week where I'll see if I can't do something about that nasty marquee, and I'll show you a plug-and-play way to add games to this cabinet. And also, make sure you check this video's description for all the eBay listings for all the parts that I use in this episode, including that awesome control panel overlay and riser decal. Thanks for stopping by. Y'all have a blessed day, and I will see you next time.